Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to start talking a little bit more in depth about HTTP requests. We're gonna talk about dif the different HTTP methods for requests that you can make, and we're gonna send some HTTP requests and get some data back. Now remember, whenever you go to a web page, your browser sends an HTTP request to the server, which then sends an HTTP request back to you. This cycle is very important for you to understand. You send a request and it sends back a response. You send a request, it sends you a response. One super useful tool for making HTTP requests and testing this type of stuff is Postman. I've got it loaded up here. Um, Postman has a native app, which I'm using, um, and it's great if you're on your own computer and you can install it. However, if you're not on your own computer and you're um, on one of the university computers or something like that, they do have a Chrome extension. It's deprecated and doesn't have all of the features of the native app, but it still works and it, it, it does its job perfectly well. So either one of those will be very helpful when it comes to building and troubleshooting and testing out your web apps. So let's go ahead and send a request. So right here at the top, I can pick what type of request I want to send. These are all the different HTTP methods or HTTP verbs, as you say. The most common is git, but there's a lot of different ones that you could use. So I'm going to send a git request. And I'm going to send this request to the university's website, https colon slash slash www.coker.edu. Now, before I actually send this, think about what you expect to come back, because I am sending a GET request to this website. This is just like I'm in a browser. So let's go ahead and send this and see what happens. We got back some stuff. This is the body. We got back a, some, a cookie. We got back a bunch of headers. And this is just metadata about it. For example, I can see here that Coker is using Nginx as its web server. You can see the date. You can see all kinds of different stuff on here. Um, you'll pretty much never use this information, but your browser uses this information. But in the body is where I want to talk. You can see here that we got back an HTML document. Docs have HTML, and it's just a whole HTML document. If I were to save this, to copy all of this, and paste this into an HTML file and load it up in my browser, it would load up just fine. That's what the server sent back. It sent back an HTML file. That's all it did. As I said, you can send different types of requests. Um, get requests are the most common for getting information. You send this whenever you want to retrieve some information from something. But there's also other methods, such as post. Whenever you send a POST request, generally speaking, you're sending along some data and telling the receiving server, hey, use this data to do something. Oftentimes, this will be to like make a new entry in a database. Like if you, if you add a comment to a Facebook um, post, then your computer is sending a POST request to Facebook saying, hey, here's some information. Here's a comment from this user. Please add it to the database. Put requests are very common. Those are used for whenever you update something, whenever you're modifying or editing something in a database. Sometimes patch is used for that as well. Those are, are very closely related. Delete is just what you would think. It's actually deleting the request. Those are the ones that you will almost always use. I've literally never in my life used any of the rest of these. I, I've seen them every once in a while you'll see them, but I've, I've never actually had to use them in any of the programs I've written, any jobs I've ever had, never used them. You're, you're going to use these top five the most, and to be honest, get, post, and delete are the ones you'll use 95% of the time. Put and patch are also important for whenever you're editing, but almost always you're going to use get, post, or delete. One thing to keep in mind is that all these are our protocols. These are just a way of formatting data. You can't force anything to happen by sending these. For example, if I send a delete request to coker.edu, it's not going to delete anything. It's going to do nothing. It's just going to return the exact same HTML because on the back end they've handled that. They've said, hey, if somebody sends a delete request, just send the, the regular HTML, don't do anything. It's just a protocol. It's just a way for me as a developer to make it a little bit easier to use my website or to use whatever website I'm working with. These aren't ways to force anything, it's just a protocol. So let's go ahead and make another GET request to Coker. And one important thing I want to point out is the status. The status is a number. The status will always be a number. In this case, it's 200. There's a lot of different status codes, and you can look them up if you're interested. But a status is just a numerical code that's part of the HTTP protocol, and it's a standardized way of saying that the request had a certain event. For example, 200 means everything went great Here's your data. It worked well, perfect, wonderful. But there's a lot more out there. Um, you're probably most familiar with 404. 
whenever it's 404, it means you requested a page that doesn't exist. 403 would mean you requested a page that you are not allowed to access. It's forbidden. 500 would mean there's an internal server error or there's some problem with the server. Basically, to put it in the most basic um, concept, 200 means it's all good. Whenever you get a 200 something, 200, 201, 205, 220, 299, whatever, 200 all the way up to 299, it means good. It means it went well, you did, there were no problems. 300, any of the 300s, 300, 301, so on and so forth, are redirections, meaning that we're going to redirect you somewhere else. This is not common at all. You'll almost never see those. 400s, 400, 401, 404, mean you screwed up. You as the user screwed something up, so get it right next time. The 500s, 500, 501, so on and so forth, means we screwed up. It means our servers are jacked up or we did something wrong. So just keep that in mind. 200 is all good. 400, you screwed up. 500, we screwed up. And I wanted to show you one more thing about making HTTP requests. Here I am at the Coker homepage, and you notice the URL up here, www.coker.edu. If I come to the search and I search for something like um, computer, then you'll notice the URL changed. It now has this question mark, and then S equals computer. This is known as a query. In the URL, if you put a question mark, everything that follows is going to be key value pairs. So S is the key, computer is the value. So I assume S means stands for search is probably what that means. This value is what we search for. So right now it searched for a computer, but if I search for athletics, and I didn't actually search, I didn't come to the search bar, I just changed the URL, you can now see that we've got athletics. And that's just sending that additional information along to the with the HTTP request. So to summarize, we talked about sending different HTTP requests. We talked about the three main methods, get, post, and delete, but we also talked about put and patch um, and what each of those does. We actually sent a get request to coker.edu. We got back this HTML and we got back some headers, and we got back a cookie, we got back a status code, 200 being okay. We talked about the different statuses, 200 is all good, 400 is you screwed up, 500 is we screwed up, and we also talked about how you can add different parameters into your um, URL. So if I put a question mark S equals computer, I still get the same response back, except then the body, it's got different information in there because it's now looking for a search, doing a search of that website. Just note that all of this, the query strings, is set up by the developer of that website. You can't just go to youtube.com and type s equals computer or whatever. That may or may not work. We have no idea. I have no idea if that's going to work because I've not tried it. That's just something the developer sets up as part of their um, API. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Thanks.